Good morning, everybody. This is hopefully going to be a short video. Um, I'm just on here to do two things. One, I'm going to show you um, an early birthday gift from my wife that I may have her just go ahead and wrap it. I don't know. Um, she knew she knows that I like reading and I've been reading. Um, well, she knows I've been reading a lot, but I'm down to the point where I'm done with the Nordic reading the Nordic Way book, reading the Modern Viking book, reading the Mary Summerain books. Which, um, did I put them up there? Yes, I did. Um, I know I didn't give any kind of um, um, critique or anything like that on. The other three books, the two Mary Summerine books, and the... I think I did talk about the uh, modern-day Viking book, but... Um, I started reading um, a series that I lost in Hurricane Sandy. And I recently bought book one of three. Actually, there's four, because the fourth one didn't come out until... After I was done reading most of the... The Dragonlance Chronicles, which I know a lot of you don't know what Dragonlance is, but I, I'm going to tell you a little bit real quick. And now she got the, the four book set. Um, I don't know why they did it the way they did it, but okay. Oh, maybe so you couldn't read the, the back cover. But I'm reading this one right now. Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Um, the next one is supposed to be Winter Night, then Spring Dawning. And they came out with the Dragons of Summer Flame, and I'm not 100%, I've never read that one. So it's a new one out of the series that must have come out probably after high, my high school days, because I was reading those back in high school. And um, I don't, I don't. What's the words I'm using? I don't collect that much stuff. Um, what I do collect or whatever I do keep, um, if I read it book-wise, is something that either A, really caught my mind, I guess you'd say caught my eye. I, I don't want to say caught my eye because it's kind of like, how does reading something catch your eye? It's If you read something, it doesn't really catch your eye. It catches something else. Um if anybody can tell me what that other thing is, um, I'd be happy to learn it. Um, everybody's opinions are different when it comes to um, reading materials or art or just about anything. Um, but I was telling Jerry the other day that I'm I'm going to have to go out and get the uh, next book out of the series, which would have been Winter's Night, because I'm almost done with Autumn Twilight. And she jumped on Amazon and, and bought those for me, which is like, oh, great. Because I sometimes, depending on the book or whatnot, I sometimes cause the the binding to stretch and crack and whatnot, which you can probably tell on, well, actually, that one didn't, that, that one didn't crack that much. I didn't find one of the ones that I really stretched out, but I guess I don't have them. I must have lost those in the flood as well. There's so many things that I lost in Hurricane Sandy that I don't remember at all. Um, some of it I'm kind of happy that I lost because it was just never going to be used again or, or looked at again or whatnot. And other time, other things, it's kind of like, oh man, I really wish that would have been above the flooding, the, the water level in the house. And then, like I said, sometimes it's a blessing in disguise because you have, it forces you to purge stuff that's just sitting around collecting dust. There's no, pur there's no further purpose for it. Um, part two of this little video is a Bible verse. So, those of you who don't want to hear anything about the Bible or don't want to hear me give my opinions or my synapses or my feelings about the verse, this is where you guys can go ahead and leave if you want to. 
Um, I'm not saying you should. You might get something out of it. I don't know. You know, I just know that there are those out there who don't want to hear anything about the Bible. Which I, I feel sorry for you guys. Because even though I'm not a active member in a church, um, I still learn stuff. Every time I read it, I still learn something new. Or find something new that's prevalent or has reflection from uh, on my life. Um, anyhow, this is Psalms. We're on Psalms right now. Um, looks like we have a long haul of Psalms. Psalms is one of those big books, I guess you'd say, because it's got hundreds of chapters and thousands of verses. Um, but anyhow, it says here, who despises a vile person, but holds, uh, yeah, but now I'm going to start all over because I'm just waking up. So I'm having reading issues. Who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keep an oath, even when it hurts and does not change their minds. Now that's just the that's just the memory verse that that Michelle had written down or sent out, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read this one section because to me that one little area is kind of difficult to to grasp unless. The one who walks is the one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart. Those tongues utter no slander, who does not, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others. Okay. All right. All right. Now that I've read the first couple verses on this. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and read the whole thing because just that one little verse, um, just verse four alone, does not, does not put out or, or give out all that they're saying. So the whole, the whole, chapter, which is just a short little chapter, says, Lord, who may dwell in your, uh, in your sacred tent, who may live on your holy mountain? And then it goes to say, the one whose walk is blameless, who does, n who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, the, whose tongue utters no slander, who does not wrong to an, who does no wrong to a neighbor, and casts no slur on those, who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keep an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be forsaken. Or no, I'm sorry, that la I, 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 I misspoke that last one. The last one is, whoever does these things will never be shaken. And Michelle had highlighted... Um, verse four, which is who despises, who despises a, a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath, even when it hurts and does not change their mind. So that, now that I've read that whole chapter, um, I understand what she's trying to say. Basically, that 
chat that little verse alone is basically saying whomever despises and I, I don't usually like using that word but whoever despises a vile or in in modern day tongue vile would be bad person or evil person um but honors those who honor who fear the lord and keeps their oath no matter what and is basically steadfast in their decision or their their belief in god um <clears throat> In today's world, that whole chapter would be very difficult. Because, well, I think it would be. I, at least I've had that problem. Because there's always some form of negative influence. And maybe this is, this is coming from my negative past where I was a negative person. Um, excuse me. Nothing like morning belches with tea. Um, my negative self would say that would be a very that 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 is virtually impossible. Well, I can't say it's impossible. I, I can definitely say it's it's not virtually impossible. It is it is possible. There is a lot of possibilities um, when you're a positive person. I, I'm learning. Um, I don't want to say my Michelle because that sounds, sounds weird to me, but Michelle was a very positive, I mean, very, 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 very positive person. Um, <clears throat> not gonna do it, not gonna do it, um. To live in, in in today's society with a virtuous heart, let's say, is kind of difficult because of all the negative influence that we're dealing with. Um, there's a gentleman, and I can't remember his name or his TikTok or anything like that. Jenny Ann showed me this last night. There's this guy that I think he's from Britain or Australia. I can't tell. He's got that, that could be British, could be Australian type accent where he has been doing for the last, well, since the beginning of January, since, well, maybe January, not beginning, but towards the beginning of this month, sometime in January, where every month he did this back and forth thing with himself where he was talking to, I guess it's supposed to be a friend, but it was himself. Um, about all the different negative aspects of what's been going on or what's been going on in 2020 and how, how things have gotten worse over the last nine months. Um, it was kind of funny because of the way he was doing it. And I'm not saying that it was a neg he was trying to take a negative thing and turning it into a funny thing. But it was, it was funny. Um, I don't have the fortitude, that is a word I'm thinking of, the fortitude to, to be half and half. Um, Jerry talks about black, gray, and white, and I'm either or, I can't, I have a difficult time staying in the gray. Now... To me, that's negative, neutral, positive. Um, I have a difficulty staying in the um, ne uh, um, not negative. Uh, no, neutral. Negative, neutral, positive. I have a hard time staying in neutral. It's either all white or all black. I'm either all negative or I'm all positive. I am just now, after being with Jerry for... Oh my word, it has been 20 years. Oh, how the time flies. But anyhow, um, I am just learning after, well, 20 years with Jerry, but 49 years of life, um, how to live in the neutral or gray areas. Um, 
And when I am in the gray areas, I will say this much, I can see both sides of the coin. Now, after saying all that, try to get back on track. Um, there's a lot of negative in the world today. And I don't make very many oaths. I mean, the only oath, the last oath I made was my marriage, the wedding vows. And we've gone through a lot of rough times. Now, I've looked back at myself in recent months, weeks, days. Um, and I realized that there's a lot of things that I did that some people would not only frown upon, but consider my consider me a bad person. Um, I know a lot of you see the goodness in me, which, you know, thank you. <clears throat> uh, sorry, another emotional video. Um, um, but there are people out there who have done far, far worse than me in my lifetime alone. Um, I'm just going to po point out the person that pops in the top of my head. Saddam Hussein. The things that he did during Desert Storm would be classified in my brain as pretty vile. Um, but there's people far worse than him. Not in my lifetime, thankfully. Thankfully, the only one that I can think of in my lifetime is Saddam. Um, and I can't even give you details on that because, in fact, it's all historical information. And I don't have the fortitude or the brain right now to, to, to process or remember my information. <clears throat> but anyhow... The world, as we know it, has gone insane in more ways than one. I mean, the weather has gotten worse and worse and worse in the last decade alone. Um, world events have gotten out of control. I mean, <coughs> there's all these, I, I, let's just put it this way, mid 2020, I just stopped watching the news or, or digging through the news or trying to find anything out that's going on because between the pandemic and the murder hornets and the, 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 the chances that we might get struck by a comet, you know, three million miles off, you know, away from the atmosphere is still like, that's about as close as any meter has come from, in, in a long time. Um, I, I just got to the point where I couldn't look at it no more. Um, it was just getting a combination of too depressing and just too much negative information coming at me at once. And I just kind of went, whoa, no, don't feel like dealing with it right now. Not that I don't want to deal with it because unfortunately I have to deal with it. Um, it's just, I'm like, I can't, it's just getting too depressing. And I think, I think that's one of the things that's, that one of the things that's going on with me and my moods and my state of mind and whatnot is just, I've got too much negative information from outside sources coming in and I am having to either withdraw from, withdraw from, life itself, which I don't want to do, because there's, I, there's too much I got to do, um, but the thing is, is I'm struggling, and I think we all are struggling in one way or another, with just generalized life, so I'm like, 
I have to focus on the here and now, my home, my family, my job. So I haven't been I I haven't been talking about news lately because I just stopped looking at it. I just you know, the whole the whole thing when they're talking about there's new viruses popping up left and right in third world countries like certain parts of China and South America. Um, they're talking about, somebody talked about a new strain of Ebola or some other weird disease. You know, it's just a lot of information coming from a lot of sources and I don't have the time nor the energy well, I shouldn't say energy. Um, I don't have. I know I don't have. Really, don't have the time, and I don't really have the emotional. There we go. Emotional capacity to deal with new negative stuff because the old negative stuff has not gone away yet. Um, and I don't mean personal negative stuff. I'm talking about global or world negative stuff. I just. I literally want to stop reading uh, Michelle's verses and just go into, dig into um, Revelations and try to connect the dots because I think we are, yeah, we're getting, we're getting close to something, whether it's the apocalypse or some earth-shaking event. And I don't mean just by earthquakes, I mean like something like, God forbid, World War Three, or heck, the comet could actually collide with the planet and throw us all back into the 1300s, which, I don't know. How would we, as a society of today's modern day technology, fare if a comet were to even if it doesn't actually hit the planet, but scrapes by the planet to the point where it causes a global EMP where all modern day technology goes to pot. Um, what was that TV series? There's this TV series. Was it Revelation or Revolution or Rev Rev something? I can't remember the exact title, but basically something happened and it caused basically all modern day technology to get thrown back to the pre-industrial coal use, the coal burning era. Would that be the Victorian era or the industrial revolution era? I don't know, but hey, other than being, not being able to do this anymore, um, I think we can all use a major league kick in the kick in the pants um get rid of technology and have to go back to the old you know horse not really horse and cart because i'd say pre-industrial revolution um maybe that was the name of the show revolution i don't know can't remember it was long it was a while back ago but I wonder how most people would fare without technology. I mean, heck, the only thing I might miss would be electrical lights because I've got plenty of books to entertain me. It would actually help. I think it would help out because then more people would do more stuff instead of sitting in front of a TV or a computer or, you know, digital, uh, digital entertainment. That's what I'm thinking of, digital entertainment. I mean, movie actors and movie stars would have to uh, learn how to do Broadway or plays like of that nature. Um, we would have to literally go out and go grocery shopping on a our food basic food shopping on a on a regular basis because the refrigerator doesn't work. Good place to store the meat, but the problem is um, if that meat if you put warm food in the refrigerator or freezer, it 
it will cause everything to go bad. You know, you'd have to literally go meat shopping or go to the meat market every other day or so. Or basically go buy meat and then pre-cook it so it's co it's basically, it will last longer cooked because then it's not going to slowly rot in your refrigerator or do what they used to do is salt everything, salt the meats and whatnot so it lasts longer. less um, chemical by byproducts in your food. Um, no more processed food. There we go. No more processed food. Because according to some studies, we were actually healthier back in the 1800s before refrigeration and processed foods because everything had to be made by hand or, you know, pr uh, or, or dealt with right there and then after it was butchered so it wouldn't go bad. Um, you have to go fishing and eat your fresh ca uh, catch of the day. Um, so it didn't rot and become nasty and basically poison. But anyhow, that's just my thoughts. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. A little longer than I wanted to, but not as long as yesterday, thank goodness. Um, anyhow... If you like this video, go, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you uh, have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the, in the comment box. If you're new to my um, channel and you want to see more, you can basically subscribe, click on the little, uh, the little bell, and YouTube will let you know um, when I put in a new video. Until next time, be safe, have a good day, bye, God bless.